Over the course of history, the success of printmaking techniques has been closely linked to their capacity to produce multiples of the same image. Up until the end of the 18th century, these images were produced exclusively from an engraved matrix. Depending on which type of material was used to make the matrix, different names were given to different printmaking techniques. Woodcuts are made with a wooden block. Chalcography uses engraved metal plates. In chalcographic printmaking, the way in which grooves are created in the metal surface determines which of the two main classes of engraving techniques is being used – direct or indirect. Direct techniques include all those that call for the use of special tools, such as the burin, which cut away portions of metal to create the engraving to be inked and printed. Indirect techniques are those which involve the use of acids or saline solutions to corrode or cut into the metal. Etching is one chalcographic technique that falls under this category. Some of history's most famous etchers include Barocci, Parmigianino, Rembrandt, Pietro Testa, Salvator Rosa and Giambattista Piranesi. In this short video, we'll take a look at the steps taken to make an etching. Prior to engraving, the copper plate must be polished to a mirror-like shine using extremely fine sandpapers and polishing pastes. The plate's edges are then beveled, or smoothed down to a sloping 45 degree angle with files and scrapers, and polished. Finally, the plates must be perfectly degreased. The plate is covered with a thin layer of etching ground, made of bitumen, wax and mastic resin. This substance protects the metal from the mordant, the corrosive solution used to etch the plate surface. Once the etching ground has hardened, the plate is smoked by allowing the carbon soot produced by a burning torch to deposit on its protected surface. The blackened surface will make it easier to transfer the etcher's drawing. The image to be etched is then transferred in reverse onto the prepared plate. Tracing paper is one of the various methods used to do so. Before tracing, the etcher also places a sheet of magnesium dusted tissue paper between the tracing paper and the prepared plate. In this way, the pressure applied by the etcher's drawing tool will adhere the white magnesium powder to the black ground. The artist will need these trace lines for the next step. The image is then drawn onto the plate using one or more steel etching needles, which must not be too sharp. These scrape away the protective ground, leaving the underlying metal exposed and creating a non-permanent line. Once the image has been drawn through the ground, the rear side of the plate must be protected from the corrosive action of the acid bath, or bite. The plate is submerged in a mixture of water and corrosive substances known as the mordant. The bite allows the corrosive mordant to interact directly with the areas of the prepared plate surface that have been exposed by the etching needle, producing permanently engraved marks in the metal. The areas of ground left untouched by the etching needle and the covered rear side of the plate will be protected from the mordant's corrosion and therefore will not be marked. The longer the plate is left in contact with the mordant, the deeper the engraved marks will be. To achieve different levels of depth on the same plate, the etcher can interrupt the bite's corrosive action through reserves. After removing the plate from the mordant, the desired areas are covered in an acid-resistant varnish. 
The plate is then placed back in the mordant, and the newly covered areas will appear lighter than the rest of the plate. Once the plate has been sufficiently bitten, the acid-resistant ground is removed using the proper solvent. Upon completion of this step, the etched plate will be ready for the printing press. Printing is the culminating moment and ultimate goal of the engraver's work. It takes place in three stages. First, the entire surface of the plate is covered in printer's ink, made of boiled linseed oil and lamp black. Excess ink is removed from non-engraved areas of the plate using a spatula, tarlatan, an open weave muslin fabric, paper, and finally, by delicately rubbing the plate with the palm of the hand. Finally, the printing itself. Together with a sheet of cotton paper, the plate is run through the heavy rollers of the printing press. Once cleaned, the plate should only have ink left within the engraved grooves. The pressure exerted by the press's cylindrical rollers pushes the paper, softened after a bath in water and elastic by nature, into the inked grooves. The pigment, therefore, is transferred from the metal to the paper, producing a print which will appear in reverse in regards to the etched plate. The etcher must repeat the same process for each copy. And so, at the end of this long and meticulous process, the artist is always filled with fresh emotion upon lifting up that piece of paper and thereby breathing new life into an unsurpassed art form.